At Indiana University School of Medicine, we have a strong focus on Alzheimer's disease. But as with many institutions, our focus is on late onset Alzheimer's disease. And we recognize that there was a paucity of studies focused on early onset Alzheimer's disease. The LEAD study fills an important gap. The LEAD study stands for Longitudinal Early Onset Alzheimer's Disease Study. Four or five years ago, when we realized that there is a chunk of the Alzheimer's disease population that is not studied anywhere, not in observational, not in clinical trials. And that was the early onset population that is unfortunate enough to get this disease earlier than age 65. It is so critical for us as a community to understand early onset and the causes of it, because it is a group that has been understudied for decades. The LEAD study is the first ever large multi-center uh, study of people with early onset Alzheimer's disease. The real goals of the study were to try to give people with this di diagnosis that was suspected access to the latest cutting edge technology to get the best diagnosis possible. It's clear that this disease has some different aspects to it from the more common form of Alzheimer's disease that occurs later in life. But understanding the early Alzheimer's disease may open up new opportunities for us to understand the pathophysiology for Alzheimer's disease in general. One of the things I hope the most for LEADS is first of all to have people understand that Alzheimer's disease is not a disease of the elderly, that it can in fact affect people earlier in middle ages. There is the stigma where it's so hard for somebody in, who is young and middle aged to actually talk about, I have Alzheimer's. They oftentimes don't come to medical attention early enough. They get diagnosed later in the disease course. And that of course is not optimal because we can't start the newest treatments if they have progressed beyond the mild stage. Early onset Alzheimer's disease is probably more prevalent than we realize. It often uh, gets uh, quite delayed in terms of diagnosis. Part of the problem is that medical professionals just don't really recognize the possibility that someone under the age of 65 might be developing symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. And many people who develop the uh, early symptoms of Alzheimer's disease are uh, deferred in terms of uh, referrals to neurologists or other specialists. When an individual presents to their physician with memory problems. The first thing that physician thinks about is not Alzheimer's. They connect that with an individual over 65. So a clinician looking at a younger person with memory problems is gonna to start to think depression, is gonna to start to think drug or alcohol abuse, sleep issues. And it may take years for that clinician to actually make an accurate diagnosis of Alzheimer's. As it is, it can take a regular clinician six to 12 months that's if you even start with the word Alzheimer's. So at Indiana University School of Medicine, we've made a commitment to neuroscience and Alzheimer's disease research in particular. Within our institution, we have studies that span from very basic model organisms, understanding basic etiology. We have studies focused on individuals that look at early onset, late onset disease, trying to understand the factors incorporated in disease risk also caregivers, and another focus for us is to look at how can we develop disease-altering therapies through our TREAT AD models. We are hoping that the biggest impact for LEADS is that we will have a better understanding of early Alzheimer's and how it presents, how it progresses over time, and eventually the hope is that it will help us design clinical interventions for these patients. Because this population was so ostracized from research, we know very little about the unique risk factors that they carry. I'm especially excited about the impact we will have on genetics. So this is a young population that has an aggressive disease starting early and progressing really fast. What are the genetic drivers of such aggressive progression? Today, we actually understand that through biological markers, we might be able to detect these brain changes of Alzheimer's in individuals in their middle ages as well who don't yet have Alzheimer's dementia, but might have something called mild cognitive impairment. But if those biological markers are Alzheimer's markers, then that mild cognitive impairment is due to Alzheimer's. And today, there are two FDA approved medications to treat that early disease. 
One of my biggest hopes by raising awareness about LEADS at the American Academy of Neurology in our community of neurologists is that we will get more referrals into LEADS. It's a rare disease variant. Only about 4% of the population with Alzheimer's disease have this early onset. And it's hard for us to find them. We really depend on our community neurologists to be more mindful, identify, and send these people to our sites. Practicing cl clinicians should be aware that there are uh, sites for the LEAD study all around the country. The best way to refer people to those sites is to uh, look at the LEADS website, identify the location nearest you, and reach out to the contact for information on the LEADS website and find out what's involved in trying to get a patient set up to be evaluated and, and assessed through the LEADS intake process.